Hello, my name is Lauren. I'm the product manager for Android Vitals in the Google Play console, which is your destination to understand the technical quality of your game or app. We know that building and launching a game takes a lot of investment, and you want to maximize your return on this investment. To do this, you need to ensure that your users are experiencing your game as you intended. So I'm here to talk about some new tools to help you deliver higher quality experiences for your users and to do so more easily across the entire Android ecosystem. What do I mean by a higher quality experience? Well, from a technical perspective, I'm talking about your game's performance and its stability. Now, as I just said, Android Vitals is the destination for managing your technical quality. It already includes performance and stability metrics, and over 80,000 unique developers are using it every month. But I also know from your feedback that if you're a game developer, you need more from us. Let's start with performance. An increasing number of the top games on play and on mobile in general are graphically intensive. They make the most of the capabilities of the latest devices, and many appeal to users from a console or PC gaming background. For games like this, the visual world that you create is what uniquely distinguishes your game. You don't need me to tell you that this is a key part of what keeps your users playing longer, coming back, and talking about you. The challenge is balancing your game's fidelity with the need for good performance. These are two screenshots of the same game Vote Attack, a Unity demo app taken whilst playing at two different quality levels on a Pixel 2 XL. One is set to high, the other is set to medium high. If you look closely, the one on the left is higher fidelity than the one on the right. A couple of the immediate differences you can see, the second one has water reflection disabled and reduced vegetation. The point I want to make here is not as simple as saying that the one on the left is better. The question is, if you had to choose between giving your users the one on the left or the one on the right, what would you choose? This isn't a difficult question if I give you a bit more information. The session with higher fidelity settings had a lot of stuttering in our tests, and we measured frame time at the 95th percentile to be more than 50 milliseconds. Compare with the one on the right, which was really smooth when we played it and we measured frame time at the 95th percentile to be 30 milliseconds. So if you're trying to optimize Boat Attack on the Pixel 2 XL, you want to give your users the experience on your right. And in your own titles, when you make these trade-offs well, this is what your users say. But suppose this is what your users are telling you. That's obviously not what you intended. They're missing the magic. You want to do something about this. But where do you start? I said we have performance metrics in Android Vitals already. But for anyone who's looked closely, they come with a disclaimer. They only measure frames using the Android UI Toolkit framework. If you are using OpenGL or Vulkan, or if you're using a game engine that does, those frames aren't measured. So for the past few months, our team and the Android Games and Graphics team have been collaborating on an initiative to provide you, the Android game developer community, with more meaningful metrics. And today I'm really pleased to announce that we're launching a new suite of metrics in Android Vitals, which are powered by Android Performance Tuner, a new plugin to supercharge Android Vitals for game developers. We're finally giving you a scalable way to measure your frame rate performance and your graphical fidelity, and to make the trade-offs I just talked about. And to do this optimization, not just for one device, but across the whole Android device ecosystem. I'd like to emphasize the word insights. We don't just want to throw a lot of data at you. We know from your feedback on Android Vitals that being told about a problem is not helpful unless you also have the information to act on it. And that is why this product is not just designed to measure your frame rate performance, it's designed to help you optimize it. Let me show you some of the features we've built. First, we give you a complete view of your frame rate performance across all your users, broken down by the quality level they are on and the device model. The quality levels I'm referring to here 
are ones that you yourself have defined, just like the levels on which we tested boat attack. Each row or line on the chart is a quality level with the lowest level at the bottom. The device models are shown as circles in this chart, and the x-axis is measuring frame time, so lower numbers on the left are fast. The red vertical line in the middle of this chart is the target frame time. Here, it's 33 milliseconds, meaning this game is targeting 30 FPS. So for example here, we're calling out that device A on quality level 5 is running slow, which is the same situation as the test on boat attack where we ran the game on a high quality level, but saw poor performance. So this helps you at the individual device model level. But what about working at scale? We analyze your performance data and try to determine the likely cause of issues so you can differentiate between problems associated with specific device models and problems with scenes in your game. To identify game scene issues, we use annotations. These are tags that you yourself provide so you are in full control of the granularity of the insights. We call out the top device model issue, as well as the top game issue, so you can easily assess what's most important to act on first. Suppose you wanted to look into the top device model issue. 11 underperforming device models on quality level 5. When you drill down, you can see a breakdown of these underperforming models by different specs. Here you see GPU along with information that helps you decide whether to optimize at the GPU level. You also see the full list of the device models, along with user impact if you need to prioritize at this level, and GPU time to help you understand the cause of the slowness. Is this device GPU bound or CPU bound? This enables you to decide on your optimization strategy. I've spoken about issues and how you can address underperforming devices or game scenes. But to deliver the best experience to your users, you also want to know that you're making full use of their device capabilities. What if some of your users are not seeing those water reflections and vegetation right now, but you could turn them on without any performance impact? This is where opportunities come in. Just as with issues, you can drill down to understand device specs impact and GPU performance so you can prioritize and optimize. I said that this is intended to work across the Android device ecosystem. And you can get these insights on any Android devices with or without Google Play services from Android 4.1 onwards. That's API 16 or Jelly Bean. And more to the point, that's over 99% of active Android devices. This is a very special launch for Android Vitals. It's the first time that we have gone beyond platform data. Everything else in Vitals you get automatically if you publish on Play. But to get these new metrics, you need to integrate Android Performance Tuner. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to adopt this. So we're working with game engines, starting with Unity. If you're on Unity 2017.4 and above, we have a plugin that you can use. Otherwise, if you have your own game engine or you can modify the one you're using, you can do a custom integration. So how do you get it? We're currently accepting applications for our closed beta. So if you're interested in becoming an early adopter, please sign up at this link. This new plugin opens up some really exciting possibilities for game developers on play. Frame time data is only the start of our ambitions. And we'll be talking to you much more over the next few months as our plans unfold. So far, I've talked about your game's performance and fidelity. Now, let me talk about stability. By stability, I mean crashes and ANRs. And as an aside, to a user, it doesn't matter which. They're equally jarring experiences. So it's important you pay attention to both. Now, those of you who use Android Vitals will know we already report on crashes and on ANRs. So what are we missing? Well, it's the actionability I talked about earlier. Not only telling you that there is a problem, but helping you to fix it. In the console today, we support deobfuscation of Java stack traces. But the same is not true for native code. If your function names have been stripped from your code, your stack traces currently end up looking like this. You don't see your function names in the stack trace, which means you're missing the information that helps you understand where this crash occurred. This makes it really hard to debug. And I know from your feedback how challenging this has been for many of you. 
So the good news is we're addressing this too. Now, if you give us your native debug symbols, we will symbolicate your crashes. So you will get more accurate crash clusters and more information to debug your stability issues. And you can provide this information when you are uploading your APK or at any point afterwards. We're hearing from developers already about how much more helpful Android Vitals is now. This is available from today in Open Beta. There's one other thing I want to talk about before I wrap up. I've covered new tools to help you measure and manage performance and stability once your game is launched. But what about preventing issues from reaching your users in the first place? If you're building a high quality game, testing is part of that story. But I know that game testing can be challenging and costly. And the more complex your game, the harder it is to automate. Hopefully, you're already aware that Play offers test tracks where you can validate your game with early users without risk to your ratings and your reviews. But Google also offers testing tools that you can use before you start engaging with external users. One of these is a feature designed specifically for native code, a game loop. A game loop is a path in your game, maybe a level or a character that you follow, but basically anything that you see as being a critical user journey in your game. It allows you to simulate gameplay on a device. You just have to trigger the loop with the Game Loop API. With a Game Loop, you can scale your testing to many more devices than you could reach with manual testing. And that means that you can increase the efficiency of your manual testing by only focusing on the things that automation can't reach. And we're also making a major improvement to them to make it easier for you to use them. In the next version of the Firebase game SDK, you will be able to write Game Loops in a platform independent manner. This means you write them once, then you use them across Android, iOS, and your desktop. If you're using Unity, we're providing a plugin which will make it even easier to adopt. And once you have your game loop, you can execute it in a number of ways. You can get a pre-launch report automatically on the Play Console if you release your app to test tracks. Or you can use Firebase Test Lab if you want to increase the breadth of your device testing. And that also allows you to do testing cross-platform. And of course, you can run them locally too. What does this look like? This is all you need to write in your native code. To call an action for your game loop, you write get scenario, and then after the loop, you call finish scenario. If you would like to explore how you can build this powerful new feature into your test strategy, please sign up at the link here. As I said at the start, we want to help you build higher quality games that reach more users. And hopefully this talk has shown how we're investing in Android Vitals and beyond to do this. Each of the tools I've walked through plays a specific role in this process. With Android Performance Tuner, you can optimize your frame rate performance and fidelity across the whole Android ecosystem. With native crash symbolication, you can debug your stability issues more easily. And with a game loop, you can run automated testing at scale and cross-platform to prevent those performance and stability issues from reaching your users in the first place. If you're excited by what you've seen and heard today, and I really hope you are, please go to the link provided and express your interest. I'm looking forward to hearing from many of you. Thank you for listening.